Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna make this adorable little sandpiper. This is actually going to be a two-part video because I'm also going to show you how I made this background, this like surf background, but that's too long for one video to have both of these together. So look for part two in early August. I also have this beautiful sand paper that is linked in the description below. And here are some other samples that I made. This is actually part of the background, part of the process of making the background that I'm using today. There's one print, there's a second print, and then the third print was what we're going to be using today. But there are lots of other fun backgrounds. So I'll show you this with a different focal point in the first August video. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be really fun. But today we're going to make a little sandpiper running on the beach with just these two pieces of paper. This pretty blue and white print that I thought looked like surf. And then the sand. And you can see there's kind of a natural line where there's like a white section in the middle. And that's what I'm going to use for sort of like a wave coming up to the beach. And you're gonna be amazed at how natural this looks. Now, if you want to cut it, you can do that. I'm just going to tear it along that white line. And if you tear down, you will not get that exposed center of the paper white edge. And if you tear up towards yourself, you will. So I didn't want that, so I tore down and I just gave myself kind of a diagonal like I always do on all my beach scenes. I'm so predictable, I don't know why. And I'm just going to take my glue press and make sure, especially since this is copy paper that I printed on, you want to get all the way up to that torn edge so that it doesn't stick up off your card. So the glue press is perfect for that. So I will put this down on, this is just a regular card panel, just a five and a quarter by four piece of the sand paper. And like I said, I'll list that in the description. It's really pretty. There are a bunch of fun textures in this paper pack, but I love how this one really looks like sand. It could also look like cork. It's totally up to you, but that really looks like water coming up onto the beach. And it's just in a couple of seconds, you have your background for your little sandpiper. So I looked up, even though this is a bird I'm familiar with, I like to look up reference pictures just to see how they are colored. And you'll notice that he's really mostly white, but he has some brown little tan patches. And he also has these like very dark kind of spotty almost feathers. And his legs are kind of dark. So I'm going to color his eye, which is that tiny little circle you see above, his beak and his legs with a black marker. Just keep it simple. And I always like to see what is covered up and what sticks out of the next layer before I finish coloring. So I don't, so you can see part of his little leg is covered up by the next layer. But I can see that on that back leg, I need to color up a little bit more to cover up that leg. And I also need to do his beak. And his face is really completely covered up. So you don't have to worry if you go into the bird's head a little bit with the marker. It's fine. It's going to be covered up by the next layer. But I like to kind of put those together before I'm done coloring just so I can see. So this little guy just has three pieces plus his eye so it's just a four piece die and this top section has all the detail on it and that's kind of where the color on a sandpiper is focused is on that top part so i'm just going to do some really gentle sort of blending and i realized i was using gray ink <laughs> And I realized sometimes I just don't get my brushes all the way clean. I don't know what it is. Like I use brush soap and everything. It's just, I don't know if it's certain kinds of ink or what. And I'm not really good about separating the colors. So I switched brushes here so that I didn't have a yellow gray bird. <laughs> and just very, very gently put a little bit of gray. There isn't much color on these birds at all, which is one of the things that's going to make this dye 
such a fun and easy one to put together, especially if you have anybody who lives by the beach or likes to go to the beach. This would be such a cute little card. Or you could put him on a tag. He's just cute. Okay, so then I have the little brushes from Honeybee, the little detail brushes. I'm just going to add very subtle little spots of brown like I saw in that Google image of the sandpiper just here and there. It looked like he had a little spot on his head and then there was a little spot kind of on his wing of the brown. And I chose antique linen because it's so pale. I figured I couldn't make a mistake by <laughs> putting too much ink down to begin with. So this is a good ink if you want to just kind of build it up into the color that you want. So I'll add a little spot on the wing. I love these little detailed brushes. That really helps. So you can see how subtle that color is. And that's going to layer on top of really what's essentially white because the bottom of the bird is white. So cute. And all that little feather detail is going to help me color in the little spotty parts that I found when I looked at the bird picture. And to get that done, I'm just going to grab toner gray Copic markers and just pop those into the little detailed parts. I will also, and I do this off camera after I've kind of showed you the rest of the bird, I use the same marker on the pattern paper for the sand to make little um, three piece bird tracks behind the sandpiper's feet. It's really subtle and pattern paper takes alcohol ink very, very differently than cardstock. So just know that going in, it tends to spread out a little bit because most pattern paper has a very matte finish to it. And so it absorbs that alcohol ink and kind of spreads it out a little bit. So you're not going to get super fine detail. But what I find is that if I go over it over and over, so put it down, let it dry, put it down, let it dry, put it down, let it dry, you can get a little bit more detail out of it. And it really is a cute little effect. Now I noticed that he had just some little spots kind of around the top of his head and a little bit farther down on the wing. And so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to have little dots. And add those all around. Those are just like little pin feathers around his little head. Very cute. And I used T3 and T4 for these, but I ended up just T4 was just a darker color. And so I ended up using that for all of these little dots, the little fine dots and the kind of larger feathers that you'll find the little grooves on this die go. And I'm sure this is what they designed because <laughs> they're the designers. But the little grooves on the die show you where those darker feathers on a sandpiper are. So it's very realistic and it's easy to color. That's really all there is to it. He's so simple. He is such a simple little die cut. So I'm going to, there's a little piece that kind of sticks out that has a rounded bit on the end, which is where you put his eye. I had colored that with a black marker. And so I just put it, it's like a little peninsula on his head. So you just put the dot of glue. I find it easier to put the glue on those little small pieces and then use my crystal katana to pick that up and add it instead of trying to put the glue on the back of something that's so small. Even with the glue press, I think that's a little bit of a challenge. So now I will put the bottom two pieces together and I like to just line them up once I have the glue on there. That's one of the great things about glue and look how cute he is already. I can see a white space on his leg that I missed so I'll pick that back up in a second after I get the rest of the bird assembled and I've given his eye just a second to adhere and that really helps. With the smaller pieces you really want to give them a sec before you move on or you'll end up and it'll be stuck on your leg or something later on so let that glue set just a little bit but you can see how his eye falls perfectly into place when you put that top layer on and he's just adorable so I'll press all of his little layers together 
squish them up if they need to be moved up a little bit, and then I can show you what he looks like. He's so cute. Look how adorable he is. I love that little sticky outy part where his eye goes. But like I said, I have those white spaces on the edge, and that drives me crazy, especially when I put it on a lighter background like I'm putting it on. So I just go around the edge with any black brush marker. It could be a Sharpie. It could be whatever. And just touch those up. I just kind of like to look at them from the side and then the white just really pops out wherever you've missed that little edge. And there he is. He's so cute. So I will put him on the beach so you can see. You can put him down here where he has a little more contrast with the sand. But I think I'm going to end up putting him so his head's kind of sticking out over the water. Because you know how they like to run right at the edge of the water? It's so adorable. And then you can see their little tracks in the sand. So I put his little tracks in the sand and he's running towards the surf. Head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.